China threatens to nuke Japan continuously if Japan defends Taiwan. Welcome to China Uncensored. I'm Chris Chappell. Last week, I told you Japan's Deputy Prime Minister, Taro Aso, said Japan would go to war if China invaded Taiwan. By the way, that episode was not only demonetized, but age-restricted. Which was a shame because it got one and a half million views before YouTube decided to kill it. The reason I bring this up is because there's a non-zero chance the same thing could happen with today's episode. Since China has responded to Japan's threat by saying it will nuke Japan. And I'm able to bring you this story despite YouTube's shenanigans, thanks to the support of everyone watching who contributes to China Uncensored on the crowdfunding website Patreon. Join us in the fight to expose the Chinese Communist Party to the world with as little as a dollar per episode on patreon.com slash China Uncensored. So, with the show's basic survival out of the way, Here's the story. Right after this quick commercial break. Just kidding, I'm not gonna bother this time. So China has threatened not only to nuke Japan if it defends Taiwan, they threatened to continuously nuke Japan if they send even just one soldier. Here's the video. When we Taiwan, if the Japanese now, when the Chinese Communist Party first developed nuclear weapons, they promised never to use them against a country that doesn't have nukes. They said they would unconditionally refrain from using or threatening to use nuclear weapons against non-nuclear weapon states or nuclear weapon-free zones. Japan doesn't have nukes. But I guess the Chinese regime is making an exception. The video was first posted to a video sharing platform called Shigua. Shigua, by the way, is owned by ByteDance, the same Chinese company that owns TikTok. The video was posted by a military commentary channel, approved by the CCP and with close ties to the People's Liberation Army. Which wouldn't it have been such a big deal? People say all kinds of idiot things on the internet. I should know. But then it started getting shared and reposted by local Chinese Communist Party committees. So this went from being a video posted by some quack on the internet to being a message approved by the Chinese Communist Party. Of course, since this was posted by local party committees, the central government has plausible deniability. Was this just some local party official getting a tad too patriotic? Or is this a message the Chinese Communist Party wants to send to Japan? Like I said, plausible deniability. Now after this became international news, the original video was deleted. Obviously not before everyone made copies. The channel also posted a second video that talks about how China should invade Japan and the aftermath of the nuclear war. It was also deleted. The video suggests that China and Russia should simultaneously attack Japan, while North Korea might want to use the opportunity to also invade South Korea. And after they've completely destroyed Japan as a country, China will break up Japan's four main islands into four independent countries under the supervision of China and Russia. We certainly have a lot to look forward to in a world dominated by the Chinese Communist Party. But in a twisted way, the CCP is actually making the argument for Japan. When Deputy Prime Minister Taro Aso said Japan would fight if China invaded Taiwan, he was arguing a Chinese invasion of Taiwan would threaten the survival of Japan. Yeah, kind of sounds like it. Of course, you could say, Chris, you're just some idiot on the internet who's blowing this way out of proportion. It's not like this was an official video. Right. It's not like last year when the People's Liberation Army 
released this highly produced video showing an attack on the U.S. Air Force Base in Guam. Huh. I wonder if we should actually listen to what the CCP is saying about attacking all of us. Nah, probably should still invest in Chinese bonds. And now, as a thank you to fans who keep the show alive by contributing on Patreon, I'll answer one of their questions. Jazzcam asks, Chris, would appreciate your thoughts on whether an internal revolution, aka Poland, or an international set of actions, aka South Africa, have the best chance of bringing the CCP down? Now that's something I think about a lot. It's a really good question. So on the one hand, the U.S. still has tremendous leverage over the Chinese Communist Party. The party is desperate for U.S. dollars. Recently I did a full episode about that. I'll put the link in the description. Basically, without access to U.S. dollars, the Communist Party collapses. Which is why the party is desperately trying to create its own international financial system based on a digital currency. Eventually, the U.S. will lose this leverage. And sadly, it seems like the U.S. elite are too invested in China. It would require completely decoupling the U.S. and Chinese economy. They don't want to do that. And so likely, someday in the not too distant future, China will decouple its economy from ours when they no longer need us. So how about an internal revolution? It's hard to know exactly how people inside China feel about the Chinese regime, for obvious reasons. Certainly if the party couldn't promise economic prosperity, people would rise up. But that also depends on what the West does. The party has been pushing 30 years of patriotic education to brainwash the youth of China. It's been pretty successful. But the party is also riddled with factional infighting, corruption, and an incredibly shaky economy. What I think will ultimately happen is these internal problems will cause the collapse of the Chinese Communist Party, and any Western country still tied to the Chinese regime will suffer greatly for it. Thanks for your question and your support, Jazzcam. And thank you for watching. As you can see, your support is so critical for us to continue to be able to make China Uncensored. So if you can, head over to patreon.com slash China Uncensored to learn how you can help. You'll get some cool perks, and I might answer your question on the show. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. See you next time.